I am Flavia Zimmerman from the Australian Institute of International Affairs in Western Australia and today we have with us uh, the Bangladeshi Major General, uh, Mr. A. N. M. Munir Rizaman. Uh, Mr. Munir Rizaman, he is the President of the Bangladeshi Peace and Security Studies and he will be talking to us about current security challenges in Bangladesh uh, militancy and radicalization in the region. Um, pleasure being with you today, today uh, Major General. Thank you. Um, could you please explain briefly the historical context of militancy in Bangladesh and um, current implications for the region? The genesis of the current militancy and terrorism in Bangladesh goes back to the Afghan Jihad, where Bangladeshi fighters went to fight along with their Afghan comrades in the Afghan Jihad. Many of them not only were foot soldiers, but they also occupied positions of leadership in that battle. And in some cases, the original document that was released by Al-Qaeda also had a Bangladeshi signatory in the name of Maulana Fazlur Rahman. So the context is that the Bangladeshi fighters did fight in Afghan Jihad and foot, as foot soldiers also in leadership positions. After the war, many of them came back to Bangladesh and they were the ones who formed the current terrorist organizations in Bangladesh and occupied the positions of leadership in Bangladesh. And we see the birth of JMP or Jamaatul Mujahideen Bangladesh. We also saw the birth of Hujibi, Harkatul Jihad Bangladesh. So the genesis of the birth of terrorist and militant organizations in Bangladesh goes back to Bangladeshi participation or the Bangladeshi fighters participation in the Afghan Jihad. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your answer and for clarifying um, the situation in the region. Um, in your opinion, um, which would be the leading causes um, to radicalization and recruitment to jihadi operations in the region? Uh, the jihadi operation recruitment and radicalization is a slightly more country-specific context. So in the context of Bangladesh, there are a number of internal and external drivers. Just to name a few, in the internal drivers, Bangladesh has got large issues of poverty and marginalization at the grassroots level. So those are the areas where recruitment exploitation has taken place by the jihadi groups in Bangladesh. We also saw a youth bulge in Bangladesh, a large number of young people, many of them unemployed. And those are the areas where the recruiters came and tried to recruit out of the youth bulge groups. We now see the recruitment not only happening out of the Madrasa boys of the rural areas, but we now see a, a active recruitment coming out of urban radicalization, urban youth radicalization, for example. We see the impact of the migrant workers coming back from the Middle East and the Gulf areas, who sometimes big confused identity crisis with them, and they are the ones who also infuse back some of the Wahhabi Islamic principles back into a country which has so far been secular. It has been a liberal, moderate Muslim country. It has been a country that has followed Sufi brand of Islam. So there is a clash of the ideology of the practice of Islam from the Wahhabi brand that the migrant workers bring back to Bangladesh. and. Uh, practice of Islam that has been existing in the country for centuries together. We now also have a serious problem of uh, cyber radicalization where young people get on the internet and get radicalized through the cyber or the internet. We also have the influence of the rise of ISIS or Daesh internationally and we already had the problem of AQIS or Al-Qaeda and subcontinent. In some cases we now see that in South Asian context, also in the context of Bangladesh, AQIS and Daesh are competing for space, so there is an increased amount of activity into the competing space for their own turf in Bangladesh and in South Asia. Mm, mm, well, thank you so much. Um, this is a very uh, complex scenario. And um, another point that um, I would like to ask, just some clarification, um, to which extent um, the political framework in Bangladesh and corruption may also impact uh, recruitment and also um, the way authorities are cracking down on jihadi operations in Bangladesh. Uh, all recruitment and jihadi operations try to find space in the governance or non-delivery of governance. 
So in the context of South Asia and in the context of Bangladesh, there are also serious issues of governance, there are issues of the efficiency of various organizations and institutions. Therefore, uh, wherever in a country you have political challenges, like we have severe political issues in Bangladesh between the political parties in the country, and in some cases there is a political vacuum that has existed because of non-participation of certain political parties in the political process of the country. Those vacuums are dangerous for process of radicalization. And in the context of Bangladesh, we see that those political vacuums have been exploited by the jihadi and the extremist groups to occupy the space for themselves. So it needs to be said that for any process of radicalization, Governance is a major issue. Wherever we have issues of corruption, it eats up into the capacity of the response community of the state. So therefore, corruption also becomes a major issue in building response capacity of the state. So these are issues that are very relevant to Bangladesh and also to South Asia. Mm, absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Major General. Um, just our final question, uh, and to wrap up our interview. Um, in your opinion, um, which would be the best pathway and the best strategy to counter um, the current situation in Bangladesh and the recruitment for jihadi um, fighters in, in Bangladesh and across the region? I will start with the country-specific case of Bangladesh first. For any country to fight uh, the rise of extremism, to fight the rise of radicalization and terrorism in a country, the first thing that needs to be done is national unity. This is a national problem. This is not a problem of a government or a party or a group, but it needs national response. So therefore, we need to build a national unity platform which can then galvanize the people, bring the people on board to fight it together. So that is the first point. The second uh, point is to build capacity of the state in the form of the response of the law enforcement agencies so that they can do the kinetic counter-response operation at the operational level. But then again, it is important for us to note that kinetic operations or police or military operations cannot stop the rise of militancy and terrorism. It needs a political approach to counter it. It needs a societal approach to counter it. It needs a whole of government approach to counter it. It needs a whole of country's approach to counter it. So we need an overarching architecture for counter responses. It cannot be a piecemeal approach to countering the process of radicalization and terrorism. We need a national strategy to counter radicalization and counterterrorism. At the regional level, we need far greater cooperation in South Asia between and among states. We have to have cooperation for the sake that we need to share intelligence among states. We need to have cooperation for building capacity among states. We need to have real-time exchange of information among states because South Asia has now become a region that has been completely infested with the threat of terrorism and radicalization. So we need far greater cooperation among states of South Asia so that we can have a regional approach to counterterrorism, and that is the most effective way. Bangladesh has been in the limelight of the political discussion, particularly due to a recent terrorist attack in July this year, and uh, we would like to ask the Major General um, his reflections on the incident, and um, particularly the political actors that tri triggered this um, terrorist attack. On the 1st of July, a major terrorist incident took place in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Just to give you a brief description of the inc incident, an attack took place in an off-market restaurant in the city, in the diplomatic zone of the capital, where normally a large number of foreigners go to dine in the evening. So we saw a hostage situation starting at 7.30 in the evening, where people were dining and there were about foreigners and Bangladeshis. So five attackers took over the restaurant and then segregated the Bangladeshis from the foreigners. They were 20 Japanese and Italian nationals in the restaurant at that moment. They killed all of them. And the manner they were killed were horrific in the sense that they were hacked to death and also shot. After that, the Bangladeshi nationals were there. They were allowed to go out of the restaurant. So they made a signature of their own saying that we don't accept the presence of foreign nationals because they are against our religion. And that is a message they were trying to send out. 
And we also see, unhappily, that all the photographs of the incident were then uploaded by the attackers on the websites, which were then carried out, carried also by the Daesh website, almost on real time. So finally, the incident ended with a military commando operation, and all the five attackers were either killed or they committed suicide prior to the attack. But this was a major game changer of the terrorist incidents in the country. We have had a series of individual assassinations and killings by terrorist groups in the country for the last two years. But this was a major incident in which attackers took over a restaurant in the heart of the diplomatic zone of the capital and were, were successfully carried out killing of foreign nationals that had sent out a chilling message not only to Bangladeshis in the country, but to a large number of our friends and allies internationally. So this incident has been one that has shaken the country and it must be taken very seriously for the reason that it is for the first time we saw the youth radicalization at play as a form of violent terrorism because all the five attackers were of the age group between 18 to 22 or 23. Three of them happened to be university educated, two of them from Australian universities outside the country, one of them went to a private university, elite university in Dhaka City, and two other uh, attackers were from rural areas. So we see a combination of well-to-do, affluent young kids, well-educated, from Bangladesh universities, also from foreign universities, and a combination of young madrasa kids joining together to carry out an operation. So we see a new turn of youth radicalization in the country. We see a violent turn of the terrorist incidents in the country. And therefore, this is a turning point in our counterterrorism operations and has to be taken seriously by Bangladesh and the international community. Mm. Well, thank you so much for your clarification, Major General. Now, before we go, um, I was just wondering, um, on the basis of uh, your account on the, this terrorist attack, um, possible ways to counter anti-Western sentiment in Bangladesh, uh, what would be your views on this regard? In this, the Bangladesh government is working with a number of our friends and allies all across the world. We are cooperating with all countries in building more cooperation for counterterrorism. We are also looking at ways of securing areas where foreign nationals live and operate and go about. So therefore, the confidence is being brought back so that they feel secure in the country, in that a lot of steps have been taken by the government and the law enforcement and they are bringing success to that operation. We are also uh, heightening the intelligence operations so that we have better understanding of what is going on in the underworld of the terrorist and militant organizations. It is also my understanding that we need to have more interfaith dialogue amongst faiths in societies and countries. And that is a way in which uh, my institute is also engaged in interfaith dialogues, so we will be increasing more activities there. So a number of steps have been taken and more ne steps need to be taken. Mm. Well, thank you so much. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, great talking to you and um, pleasure being with you today. Thank you.